topic of today is dis discover and connect urban data with AI. Um, so I guess this um, whole project is actually developed last December with two of my teammates, Sky Chen and Connie Liu. We were both studying at Columbia University Data Science Institute. So the initial idea that we had is actually uh, inspired by this paper. Uh, this paper talks about how the next generation of data analysis system should be really supporting the data enthusiasts, especially in the um, direction that they have, this system should actually suggest relevant data to enrich visualization and not only produce visualization based on the current data set. So that's essentially the idea that the industry and also academia have been pushing in the past few years. And the goal of this project is really to combine the advance in machine learning and also the wonderful open data we have in various cities to provide this platform so people can find data sets, connect data sets, and do more fun analysis. So before we start this project, we actually look into several different data platforms. So one of the most famous data platforms or Dataverse is actually the Harvard Dataverse. Uh, altogether, there's um, 100,000 different data sets hosted on this platform. But we find that it's a bit hard to navigate the whole amount of information. So it does have some means to go by category, the source of publication years. But again, these data sets are very diverse and there might be linkage between them that we didn't realize unless we have a way to view it in a more intuitive way. So we're looking to another popular platform, although Kego on website is not originally designed for sharing data sets, but people are constantly posting new interesting data sets to this website. So for those who don't know this website, Kego is actually a website for data science competition. So essentially um, people post tasks and competition to this website and data science and programmers will go into this website and compete each, against each other on different tasks. So for this website, they have a section for data sets and you can look up a data set and they actually provide you a top complementary data set recommendation. But the problems I, we quickly realized with this website is that sometimes the recommendation might not be very kind of sound. If you look at the um, main data set we are looking at is the Reddit vaccine mix, um, the top complementary data sets. Wikibook is kind of okay, but then Lexicon and even one reviews, this seems to be a bit far-fetched uh, when we try to suggest that these two are actually uh, complementary. So that's kind of motivating us to do more analysis and try to build a system that can actually perform better in terms of recommending data sets for people to connect. And we look into many two part of literature versus some recommendation system and historically data analysis system. And we also look into how to do semantic linkage of big data. And then uh, we also look into how we can make this um, platform more user friendly. And that's why we want to introduce an interactive network interface. So that's kind of where we draw the inspiration and the research from. Um, so I think it's actually better that we first um, look at the Open Data NYC website uh, first to see how um, people are doing things today. Um, first of all, I have to say NYC Open Data is a great website. I have many great functionality. And it, as you can see, um, we already have many ways to navigate the data set. Like here we can choose from different categories. We can also choose by the data type or data collection. Um, but the limitation is that sometimes we can only choose um, this by selecting certain attribute that we already know, or we know that what we are looking for. But this is limiting in the sense that we can only look into one category of data and then filter into that system and not really understand how data sets might be connecting with each other on a broader level. Um, so if we do some search, for example, I want to look at education related data sets, that actually gives me really good results. Um, and once you zoom into a specific data set, you have the ability to view the different meta data information and this also come with different tags that we can use to further discover related data set. And what's very interesting is that you can actually create visualization on the fly by using the built-in visualization system. Um, and this is all really great. But the problem we want to really solve or try to improve is that to find out data set that can actually connect with 
one data set. And we can see here that there, there's already many columns that is in the data set, but what other data set might have the same columns or even better, um, they might be the same topic and they have a column to be uh, merged upon. So that's what we set out to do uh, with the product. So I guess back to our approach, the way we are approaching this is by looking at the information you just saw. So uh, with the Open Data NYC website, we were able to look at the columns within the data set. And then we used word embedding, especially this model from Stanford to con convert those information into something that can be calculated by the machine. We also extract the metadata on the um, platform so that we can create that information as a vector and use all those to calculate how similar two data sets are. And finally, we also use tag information and all those are combined through a weighted rank so that we can recommend data sets based on the data set you choose. So I will uh, stop here for now with the technical side of the product. We can always go back later on if you have a um, question or uh, interest in this. So let me jump to the fun part of um, uh, this presentation, which is the live demo. And just uh, uh, one more thing before we start. Uh, the demo is that we are actually publishing this on Google Cloud Platform. So that means that you can also try that uh, yourself later on in this um, session. So this is the platform we ended up building for visualizing and uh, discovering and connecting NYC open data. So there are several components to this page. Uh, we call it MetaVis because it's a visualization of metadata that will help you to explore the data set. So the first thing you can do is here we have this source data tab. Um, you can go in and choose or search the data set of your interest. For example, I'll use the same word, education. The first one return is this uh, local law 15 health report, health education report. So when I enter this, you'll notice that the recommended data set actually is updated based on the source data set I chose. And you can see the number of downloads and also the name of the different data set. What you can do is that you can click on this uh, green cross so that you can add this to a network of data sets centered around the data set you, you choose. So all those five nodes represent a data set that is connected to this original data set based on the calculation of uh, the metadata, the columns, and also the tags. What you can also do is to add more data sets to this network by clicking on the plus for anything that is within this list. And you can see that this network will grow based on the data you choose um, and it's updated live. So here we have the network of data set. What you can do is to click on any of them to see uh, the metadata preview of that data set. And right now you can see that this data set, for example, is falling into education category owned by the Department of Education. And there's a brief summary of what this data set is about. You can also go to the original data set page so you can have more information and know what this data set is actually uh, you know, de depicting. So in addition to the different data set, you can also click on the link between them. So there's two kinds of uh, link. The solid link means that there is a column that we detected between those two data sets that they share. So here we will generate this um, piece of Python code. Uh, you can copy this and move in your favorite Python editor. And this will first download the data for you and then merge the two data set based on the um, common column that we found in those two data sets. And you can click on different uh, links and this will be updated live so you can understand how to download and connect those two different data sets. So for example, here uh, they are joining these two based on the school level. Here, the common link is to borrow. So again, this is not very smart or perfect right now, but this does provide a way for people to start connecting different data sets. And hopefully this code snippet will help you to speed up your work and get your result faster. So uh, let me introduce one more feature that we have. So right now you can see that all the dots, uh, all the nodes on this graph is green. That's because all of these data sets are coming from the Department of Education, or actually they are more uh, all falling in the category education. So what if I um, 
do a fresh new search. By this time, I will search for something else. Um, so I've been doing a project on uh, transportation in New York City. So I want to look at the street center lines. What I can do is I add the street center line and you will notice that there's different colors in the network. So the color actually suggests the category. So we can see that this street center line information is falling in the con category of city government. And here with the, uh, uh, this data set priority intersection is filling in transportation category. We can also add other information to see how the network look like. And you can always zoom in and adjust the shape of the network so that you can see uh, the information clearer. Also one little uh, symbology difference is that here you can see that this one is a kind of a circle. This means that this is a tabular data set while this um, rounded rectangle means that this one is actually a shape file or a map. So this is an extra information for you to decide what data set might be interesting to your use case. So that's kind of the main data or main feature we have for this uh, uh, data exploration part. To make your exploration uh, more customized, we also provide different uh, filters. So for example, I can choose data sets by the update frequency. Uh, I can choose to see only daily updated data. Here uh, we don't get any result. But if I refresh and look at the daily ones, I believe the speed data is actually uh, traffic data. You might have some daily information. Actually, they're not. So as we add more categories to this uh, update frequency, we will see that different data sets pop up in this uh, view. So you can use this to filter the data set you want. You can also filter by the last update time. This way you can also look into a historical version of the data set uh, so that you can customize the study span for your um, specific uh, case. One more thing is that you can choose the data owner. So you can choose by uh, the department that is releasing the specific data set. Uh, this can also be useful if you're looking into a specific um, problem, for example, transportation. So this has been uh, a lot of feature to introduce, but I want to introduce one last thing. Uh, this one is actually um, interesting because uh, if we look at this example, street center line, you will notice that there is actually a lot of um, related information that not be might not be directly linked to street center line. For example, this cooling tower, um, it might be the case that some of the columns in this, this data set is connected to the data sets, uh, is it here? But if I only want to look into street related information, what you can also do is to choose this AI topic filter. So what this does is that we train a NLP model, which is natural language processing model, to analyze the data set you put in and then create a filter to find data sets that are closely related to the data set that you put in. So when I turn on this topic filter, you can see that this list actually changed. And now we don't see the uh, coding tower anymore. Instead, we have street payments and also subway lines, those information that are closely related to street and transportation. So that's a really quick overview of uh, this platform. Um, the goal here is really to understand how the different data sets is related to each other within the NYC open data environment and provide an easy and intuitive interface for you to go around exploring the information, but also how to connect them based on the link they might have. Um, so I'll pause here and uh, answer any question you might have at this stage. Hey, Tim, yeah, I have one in the chat. Okay, so Daniel, your question is, yes. Uh, so that's a great question. When it's the dashed line, it actually means that we don't really detect a mergeable column um, at this moment. Um, but we do provide the code for you to download those and try to connect them yourself. So the reason they are kind of shown here is because the different columns or their metadata might be very similar, um, but we didn't find the direct column to merge on. Awesome, thanks. Thanks for the question. Yeah, thank you, Joanna, for the comment. I think this is um, the purpose for this tool is to really breaking down the silo uh, so that people can share data set. And also using this tool, like, uh, I hope that we can use this also to talk about plans for different agencies to 
coordinates so that they will have more column to be um, to use to draw on different data sets so that people can uh, conduct analysis across the agencies for better uh, efficiency, I guess. Excuse me, Tim, just if you can just elaborate when you dotted line to mean there are no actual columns, but it's a similar information. Is that what you're saying? Does that impact yes. the integrity of the data or no at all? So the dashed line uh, on it means that um, our algorithm believes that this two data set is similar in terms of the content, but we don't uh, detect two columns that is um, directly mergeable. Um, we already checked for the content. So if the um, column is actually referring to the same information, for example, borrow, but the code is named differently, like one is abbreviation B-O-R-O, -O, the other one is borrow, we can detect those and know that this is the same information. Right. Um, but we do realize there's a lot of case that uh, even when we check for the values, we cannot directly merge. Um, that's what the dashed line means. Thank you. Okay, so um, I think it's a good time for us to uh, move to the next part where I will share this link with you all in the chat so you can start exploring this on your own. Um, before I share this link, I just want to say that there's uh, some minor box with system. So sometimes you realize that you cannot um, you click on certain uh, plus sign or like minus sign, you might not um, respond directly. What you can do is to click somewhere else and go back and this bug will um, go away. And another issue is that um, sometimes you might see that uh, the result are uh, like filtered down to nothing. Uh, what you can do is to uh, reduce those filters or you can simply refresh this and this will um, give you a clean start. Okay, so let me share the link in the chat. And while you are exploring this, um, I invite you to um, take screenshots of your discovery. And I will also share this um, Google slide with you. So when you um, finish your exploration, you can choose any of those empty slides and put in the screenshot of the data network that you um, create. And I invite you to um, briefly answer two questions. Uh, what is one interesting data set or connection between data set that you found uh, with this tool? And also, um, given your experience, what do you wish to have the power to do in addition to the existing functionality supported by the platform? So um, let me share this link with you all. So um, can anyone in the audience let me know if you can access the um, dashboard successfully? If you can, um, please give me a thumb up with the Zoom. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, please take your time and, and uh, try out the different data set. And uh, let's say we will use about 10 minutes to work on your own and find different data sets of your interest. If you have any, uh, encounter any problem at any stage, please uh, let me know in the chat or just uh, unmute yourself. And when you have something to share, you can use the Google slide to put in your um, discovery. Okay, just to check in, um, are there any problems with the website that people are encountering? If so, please uh, let me know through the chat or you can unmute yourself. I'm happy to uh, help resolve that. And also um, feel free to, feel free to um, like start putting your discovery into the Google Slides. Um, it can be uh, something really simple or it can be a quite complex network. Uh, it will be great to see what everyone have discovered with this platform. And just to uh, make sure uh, you are not working on top of each other's work, uh, you can put uh, change the name on the top left corner of the page so you, uh, people can know that you are working on this page. Hey, Tim, I got a question. I was curious to know what kind of data structures and algorithms, if any, if any of that topic did you and your team use or the kind of framework and state of mind that you have to use when creating this project, if any? Yeah, so um, for the models, uh, we are mainly using um, two kind of part of the model. One part is to uh, really combine the different information of data set, that is the column information, metadata, and also text. Uh, for that part, we are mainly just using uh, word embedding 
pin code the test rate information and then create some uh, matrix um, to ma represent the metadata and also text. And then for comparing similarity, we are using cosine similarity, uh, essentially a weighted um, matrix of all those three sources of information will be compared based on their cosine similarity. And then with the AI topic filter, uh, we are using LDA, um, and that LDA is trained on the description of data sets so that uh, it can detect the theme of different data sets. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it, it clears it up. I, I can imagine that now. Thanks. And all of, this, data, all of these data sets are um, from uh, NYC open data. And since there's actually uh, many platforms that share the same structure uh, of NYC open data, uh, I can definitely see this expand to more cities or even different um, contexts, as long as the data has such um, three set of information. Okay, so I see not many of us have um, been uh, putting your discoveries into the slides. I uh, highly encourage you to do that. And it can uh, also be that you only want to um, share some strange or even interesting uh, result that you find. Um, that would be really helpful uh, as we start to think about how we can improve this platform uh, so you can have better experience discovering the data set. I think there's, yeah, thank you, Mike, for raising this and also Zach. Um, yes, data.gov is a great source and um, I have a question, actually. I'm not a tech person, so I'm just fumbling around a little bit with this, but I'm interested in cross-connecting data about the tax lien sale list as well, correlating that with Department of Health um, death certificates, Because, but I'm not really sure how I would connect those two um, in this. So could you repeat the, the data set that you are looking into? Why is that looking at the, the tax lien sale list, um, which I was able to pull up and make some correlations across like publicly owned or privately owned properties. But also I want to cross-reference that with Department of Health's um, the death certificates and the like. In our community, we have issues with the properties ending up on the tax lien sale list because of probate issues, really. Um, people not really understanding how um, or families not understanding um, their, you know, what happens when someone dies in ownership of a home and paying property taxes and the like. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to merge those two, but I don't, it's not clear to me that it's making connections to merge like those two different sets. Yeah. So may I ask, what's the information that will be used to identify the kind of match between the two data sets? Is it the name of the person or some other address maybe it would have to be it would probably have to be the name or the address the last known address of of the person that mm -hmm. would have been in the death certificate yeah so um that's actually uh one direction that our team was thinking to do in the next stage which is to create a way to um link data set by spatial proximity mm -hmm. um and that includes the uh matching address and actually uh, there's a lot of work at columbia happening here uh, with another product called Grace 3. Uh, and that one is actually developing some matching method so that you can harmonize the addresses from different sources and merge that based on this information. So uh, if, if you want to um, um, talk more about this, um, please shoot me an email after the event. I'm happy to help look into the problem you have and see. That'd be uh, great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So I think there's a few more comments um, and people um, message me about like, uh, adding and removing connection is a bit lagging and you need to click around a lot to get it work. Is that the same experience for many people? So, um, yeah. So for that, um, we're, we're not, so the team developed this platform. Uh, we are mostly working on the data science side. So UI is also like designing user interface and website is our first uh, experience. Um, so there might be some performance issue. Uh, we will try to improve that along the way. Um, but for now, uh, yeah, uh, one way to potentially solve that is by uh, refreshing the page. Um, but um, I will also add the capacity in the background just to uh, alleviate this problem. Yeah, refreshing page seems to fix the problem. So, okay. So for people who are joining uh, later on in the talk, let me re-share the link to the website. And after the um, 
talk. I'll also be sharing materials with you. And if you have uh, any question about the website or um, data sets you want to merge, uh, feel free to uh, send me an email and we can always discuss that. Okay, so um, we have about 15 minutes to go. And why don't we uh, start looking at some of the um, example people have put into the Google Slides. Here we have this um, visualization from Dan. Dan, do you want to um, unmute yourself and talk about what you found? Yeah, so um, I selected the multi tenure data provided by the Department of Sanitation, and that's on the right of the slide. And I was curious and interested as, as to how and why it's directly correlated to the data from the Department of Probation. Uh, I think I saw the data set on op open data for the DOP, and it's not really anything related to monthly tonnage. So that was mm -hmm. interesting to find. Uh, but when I showed another sanitation data set, I, there is uh, some correlation to the fields and the other data set. Um, but I've, uh, I shared on the screen the BSNY zones it doesn't really have a correlation to the monthly tonnage data, which was something that was brought up yesterday at the, at the, at the conference. By one of the panelists. Yeah, I think this is very interesting. Um, how there seems to be connection between uh, DSMY and also DOP's data. Well, there might be some kind of missing link there as well. Um, I'm yeah. just jumping in with a guess. This is Joanna. I'm wondering if it has to do maybe with the um, possible, like that that people are assigned community service sometimes for low level offenses, and that might somehow be playing into the DOP um data set people get assigned to clean things so just throwing that out there mm -hmm. yeah that's definitely one possibility and i'd also agree with dan's um comment on the um um extra feature one is to explore how the algorithm links this field um because right now we see that the algorithm believes these are some relevant data set but it's not very transparent why the algorithm believes this way so yeah i think one area of improvement, not only in, the, in this product, but also in AI in general, is to make it more interpretable so people can actually trust this and know that why um, we are seeing this result. Thank you, Dan. So let's look at another example. Pravin, do you want to unmute yourself and explain what you found? Okay, so I was, um, it's quite interesting though, you know, when I use the data set and then when I activated AI topic filter, it, it sort of went, I think, multiple direction. But what I was trying to do here in terms of just to see it, um, I found um, capital projects data that, you know, how, how, where, uh, how much data we have in terms of where capital projects are being implemented. And then uh, another portion was to, um, in terms of, uh, operations where these projects, you know, uh, where are they active and in different stages and how that um, actually correlates with the state of good, good repair need. Meaning, you know, this is state of good repair needs comes first, then there's a commitment plan and then capital projects gets implemented in terms of, and then what I was looking at data that we have, uh, I want to see, I wanted to see if that, what happens in, in the planning stage and what happens in, in reality. And at the same time, is it can be done by agencies um, and probably a timeline in terms of, you know, every 10 years there's a capital plan. And so how things change from year one to year five, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know, when we plan, if you want to repair, let's see, 30% of bridges and it's X dollars, uh, comes to year five and, you know, we only repaired 10 bridges and it cost us Y dollars or something change and then focuses on more on a roads maybe I'm just, I'm, i was just curious and i'm i mean you know i didn't really i just was trying to see what happens and uh, how data is connected uh, i mean it's, it's pretty much exploration at this point you know is a lot of, you can explore this thing to uh, for hours and just to see it and then sort of develop your model yeah definitely um and also that actually gave me an an idea like because um, many of the data sets might be published regularly uh, at an annual interval, and sometimes the, uh, the data set will not be updated on top of itself, but rather be listed as a separate data set with the year uh, in the name. So it might be interesting to see the interval of this published 
publishing schedule, as you said, understand uh, how it's being kind of managed by different agency and how they connect to each other. So yeah. that's kind of a timeline view will be also very interesting. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we, uh, yeah, Zachary, you have this comment. Um, yes, uh, make it easier for people to see the relationship between data sets. Um, and definitely, I think um, this tool hopefully can be a useful companion to the NYC Open Data Platform, and they can also be a way for people to um, try to make this service better by identifying missing links and ways to really combine them. Yeah, I think one of the, the groups, especially we'd look to, to target is like agency staff. So they can see as they're publishing new data sets, as you were saying, like, is there a data set that this could just be added to versus creating a, a brand new data set about a similar topic. Mm -hmm. And I guess um, on, on the matching, it, I know you can see in the join, like the fields they have in common. The, the other, the AI match, is that, you said that's driven by the, the contents of the description, is that correct? So um, the matching is actually looking into the values in, in the columns. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's less based on the description, but rather the values themselves. That is to make sure that when we are doing the match, they can actually... Um, That's the, the joining piece. Yes. Okay. And that AI match toggle is also looking at the, the joins or... The AI match toggle is looking at the description of the data set. Ah, okay, that, that's what I was. Yeah, that's what I think I was, I was asking. So those those dashed lines are a connection in the description, whereas the solid lines are a connection, like common values in the data. Is that fairly accurate? Am I yes. saying that properly? Okay. So so the dotted line is not only based on description, but also based on the metadata, on text, all sorts of information. But huh. okay. Yeah. okay. Eric, um, do you want to share your finding? Well, um, it's a little silly, but... I think it's silly. I mean, <laughs> it's uh, great. Everybody loved this squirrel census. <laughs> yeah, uh, I had participated in that, so I was happy to see the uh, data set there. Um, I was poking around looking for something to correlate it to, and I just found these two other links. Um, one with, an, I guess it's the number of park trails or park trail density. I'm not quite sure what the metrics there were. Uh, and the other was the uh, urban park ranger uh, involvement in, you know, relocating animals or injured animals. So, uh, and there's probably other interesting relationships, say the uh, amount of litter and the density of squirrels or uh, you know, the calls for uh, ambulances for tourists that are bitten by squirrels, <laughs> things like that. Yeah. Um, and this, like, just looking at the ranger and the squirrel census, uh, I can sense an interesting animal um, protection project going on there. Yeah. yeah this. And <laughs> if, if you're responsible for deploying the urban park rangers, maybe knowing the density of the squirrels will help you uh, put people in the right places or something yeah thanks sure karina do you want to share what you found yeah sure so i just thought it was interesting that like restaurant reopening applications was connected to illegal parking complaints that seemed interesting to me um and i've been thinking about this a lot because I, like the only connection that i can really think of here is that like a lot of outdoor seating now for restaurants because of COVID has taken up a lot of parking spaces. So I'm assuming that that's sort of where the connection was. Um, and one thing I'm just curious about is like, if you use some sort of ranking system or metric, I mean, you have to, to order the recommendations, right? And so whether we as users can actually get access to that, I feel like the transparency in, in terms of like having that number next to each one so we can compare not just oh this is third on the list but what is the difference between first second third like in order so that's to me that's really important to understand like how related these data sets actually are to each other definitely yeah we try to do some basic basic filtering so um when the only matches are low score matches we just simply don't return them um so to avoid some spurious um matches but i totally agree is um, better that we have this transparent scoring so people can really understand what is happening and trust the result. Yeah. And one little comment on this open restaurant application data set. I'm also looking into the, because um, NYC during the COVID years 
having this uh, campaign about open street. And I, I think this is a really uh, interesting observation how street life, uh, a lively neighborhood can actually uh, kind of pose some demand on potential parking spaces in the city. So if uh, we can do this analysis by doing some geographic joining, this could be really interesting to identify um, places where we might need some more parking or um, better you know, restaurant um, kind of arrangements. But yeah, thanks for sharing this. Okay, so I see that we have um, two, one more um, comments in the chat. Mm. Language connection between NYPL use of force and forestry risk. It's very interesting. Joanna, do you want to expand on that or? Yeah, no, it was just, I was just kind of having fun looking to see what the AI thought was related and things I, that I could not puzzle together myself. So I was picturing like there's some language in the forestry department at Park that overlaps some language that the NYPD uses when assessing risk or, or uh, you know, analyzing something that's gone wrong. Um, I just found that interesting from a language perspective. Yeah, totally. Um, right now, the kind of AI topic filtering is based on the description. So very likely, if they are using similar um, kind of language, this will um, bias the result instead of showing the actual connection of the content. Well, uh, this has been a really um, great experience hearing all of you uh, sharing the um, discovery you found. I hope you enjoy this process as much as I do. Um, and and hopefully with this tool, you'll be able to discover interesting data sets and also find missing links so you can advocate for those um, connections or publishing of more harmonized data sets. Um, Tim, Tim, so I think- uh, Last yeah. question. Uh, yes. Probably a stupid question. So right now we created a model here in terms of actual data. Is there, we can get it from here or just need to go to actual, the actual data set and then is that- So, um, as you can see here, uh, once you select the data set, and especially when you click on the link, yes. uh, this snippet will help you to download the data set. Um, okay. But this will be need to run in your own environment. Um, so essentially what you can do is to register for a Socrata uh, API token for NYC open data, and then you replace it here with uh, this um, placeholder, and this will give you the data set that you selected. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you find difficulty downloading a super large data set, you can also just go to the um, page itself and uh, there will be a download link there. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And um, I guess uh, one last comment uh, is that this project is uh, still in a very early stage. And uh, as you can see, our functionality uh, currently only supports uh, this recommendation within the NYC open data um, environment. We hope to expand this to more so we, we can bring even more data set about the city or outside the city. Uh, one thing is potentially to combine the MTA data uh, about subway ridership and also other transportation related data set to amplify this. And also US census uh, uh, where the uh, license apply. Um, and also, um, if you have any suggestion about the platform uh, feature you want to see, please really feel free to uh, write me an email. Um, and uh, later this week, we'll also be having another um, workshop that I just learned from Dag. Uh, Dag, do you want to introduce that uh, workshop as well? Yeah, sure. Um, there's actually another tool that works quite similarly to Tim's. Uh, it's called Scout. Um, they've been developing it for a few years but um, it allows you to see connections between different data sets. We don't have it up on our site right now. It was just rescheduled, but um, I, I just sent a link to the tool and it's going to be taking place on Thursday. So if you take a look at the Open Data Week website and you want to learn more about that tool and, and see the differences, it's a slightly different approach and like the way that they visualize the data is a little bit different, but it could be cool to compare and, and contrast. And I'm sure um, you, you, you'll have things to learn from each other. Thank you, Zach. And thank you all again for joining today. Uh, it's been a great journey and hopefully you all have fun playing with the data. Thank you and have a great Sunday. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye everybody.